I heard my furnace kick on and it was making this weird squealing noise. And I opened up the case and the squealing was coming from this motor here. Now before you work on anything, make sure you switch the power to off. But the uh, squealing was coming from this motor. This is the inducer motor. And I could tell it was binding. And even though it was calling for heat at the thermostat, the furnace wasn't on. And I came down and I heard a buzzing noise. It was a very distinct kind of meh buzzing noise coming from this furnace. And again, I look in here and this inducer motor is not spinning. And I feel it and the motor itself is hot. So my plan is to try to oil it, get it going for a few more days, um, but it end up buying a new motor. So I'm going to try to get it going now, temporarily, then I'll order a new part and have to install it. I'm just going to put some three in one oil, try to get it in all these bearings and try to spin this and get it going again. But I'll keep trying and see if it starts working. Well, all of a sudden I was turning it and it was really hard to turn, really hard to turn. And then I gave it a spin and look at that. I kept working it a little more oil and now it's spinning great again. So hopefully it'll start up. Uh, give me time to order a new motor and get it installed. So it's been seven days and the motor on the furnace has worked fine for those seven days. I just spun it. It's still spun really freely, but since we have the new part, um, it's time to change it out. Uh, this was a hundred dollars. I got it on Amazon and I'll put a link down in the description um, for this specific part and some generic ones that you can order. But what you want to do is look on the bottom of the motor and it says ICP part number. You just put that in and you'll find the part you need. So this whole unit was $100. And you might say, well, why can't I just buy the motor? It looks like you could. It's kind of uh, just bolted in here. It looks like you could buy the motor, just replace the motor and keep the housing. This is just more convenient. You take the old part off, four bolts, you put the new part on. So all I'm gonna need to use is a quarter inch socket driver or I have it on the drill. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be using to remove the old part, which is first. One other thing I want to mention, it comes with uh, the four screws and a, a foam gasket that you're going to be able to stick on here in between this and the furnace wall. And um, I'm going to use an extension to get into those, uh, to those bolts that are kind of in there. Make sure you have lots of lights so you can see what you're doing. And again, make sure you switch the furnace to off. Remove this panel and we're going to be removing four screws. So one here, one here, one here, and one down here at the bottom. The next thing is make sure you know where these wires go. I just labeled them W for white and B for black. Um, we're also going to have to remove this other uh, screw up here, which goes into the vent fume. So this whole thing will come off and this whole panel will come off here. Also, there's this uh, tube here that connects to this end here. To remove this hose here, I'm going to try using a screwdriver because mine's really stuck on there. There, that worked. Prying that off with a screwdriver. That was a little bit hard to get off and there's a ton of junk in there if you can see it. But we got it off. Um, most of the gasket came off here. I'm going to scrape the rest of this off. Um, but let's go compare the two parts. So here's the old part removed. And you can see all this rust and grit in here. Um, and it looks a lot worse on the inside here um, than it did on the outside. I'm glad we're replacing it. You can hear the bearings spinning compared to this new one I checked, which is silent. You can't hear this one at all. So I'm glad we're putting the new one on. Um, the parts look identical, which is good. So we're ready to put the new part on. I'm going to put the foam gasket on the back. It's just a peel and stick on one side. The fiberglass side kind of goes to the furnace side. Um, I'm going to stick that there. But before that, I'm going to clean up the old gasket and clean everything out. So here's that uh, hood, the vent tube 
and here's that flange and this is going to be the tricky part attaching this so first the screw the hidden screw in the back now we can attach this first top screw to hold it in place Let's get this mounted in nice and tight and then worry about the hood. We want it nice and tight. So there, that's really pushed down there tightly. Now I can put the screw in there that holds that in place. Okay, now for the wiring. I remember the white is on the left. The black wire is on the right, and this rubber hose just pushes on right over there. I think we're good to go. And just some key things to point out. You want to make sure this is nice and tight to the wall. There's no air getting out along this edge or this, this side here. And then you want to make sure that this is all nice and tight and through here and in through here. There's no gaps where fumes can get out because this goes all the way up and out. One warning I want to tell you about is um, when you're doing this there's a vent tube where the, the air and the gas is going to be vented out. When you're doing this that's going to be jostled around and moved so make sure when you put everything back together and you turn the furnace on feel if there's any air uh, blowing out of there. That's dangerous that could be carbon monoxide. Another thing is I have a carbon monoxide detector 10, 15 feet from this furnace. So if I did anything wrong and carbon monoxide is coming into this basement, that thing would beep and we would know to get out of the house, turn power off to the furnace um, before coming back down here. So that's a really good peace of mind thing to have as a carbon monoxide detector by the furnace. I do have this aluminum foil tape. So I'm just gonna go through and tape all these joints just like I did up here. All right, there we are. I went around and sealed uh, Anything that I felt a little bit of air leaking out or just a peace of mind, I sealed it up with this aluminum tape. Um, up there, too, I heard that one creaking when I moved this vent. So now I, I can feel a little bit safer. So I just got done with the installing the new part. It took all of about 10, 15 minutes at most. It was just a couple bolts and then a couple bolts to hold on that flange. The install process was really easy. And for a hundred bucks, it's a really good peace of mind. I don't have to worry about coming down here and oiling this and making sure it's spinning and why don't we have heat. Um, I'm sure this would work still now. I, I freed it up, it should be good, but just put the new part on for a hundred bucks and you should be good. So I hope this helps, thanks.